there's lots of reasons why credential rotation is inevitable. And if you just kind of took a username and password and stuck it in your application environment, like how do you change that? You know, that's actually the big question I've gotten from teams. Like, hey, you know, we've got these access credentials in our environment, but how do we change it? Because like, I need to relaunch my application, but I need to change the password. And if I change the password, then my application breaks. So like, how do I change the password and get it in the new application without breaking anything? Welcome to the DevSec for Scale podcast, the show that makes security a first-class citizen for growing companies. My name is Jeremy Hest, Head of Developer Relations at Achilles, the secrets management SaaS platform. This interview podcast brings security experts and practitioners together to offer practical and actionable ways for small and growing companies to implement security best practices using shift left principles without interrupting developer life cycles. Welcome back everyone to the DevSec for Scale podcast. My name is Jeremy Hess head of developer relations at Achilles. And with me today is Connor Mancone. He is the principal application security engineer at Simpress. And Connor, it's really great to have you finally. Uh, and I have to say that this is gonna be a special episode for a few reasons. One of them being that you are a user and a customer of Achilles. And the second being that we didn't actually prepare anything in advance for this. We just, we're going straight for it. Uh, and it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it sounds good. I'm, I'm happy to be here. So Connor, uh, before we get into a little bit more about yourself and the company, uh, can you give us a little bit about application security issues that you're seeing on a regular basis? Yeah, so I'd be happy to. Um, and, and, and just to say out loud, like this is really not a plug. Probably the, one of the biggest ones we deal with is secrets management issues, um, honestly. Um, and and just about every company I've worked with, we've had um, issues and breaches with stolen credentials. Um, it's, it's unfortunately these days kind of seems inevitable. And so we actually, in Simpress, we have a lot of rules around managing credentials and making sure they get rotated regularly. And so that creates a technical challenge for teams that aren't used to having to do that. Um, so that's kind of a big part of what I deal with. Um, and again, all of the other application security issues, you know, as we work with teams to help them identify, you know, SQLI issues in their um, systems, or, you know, another fun one is always, you know, IDOR, insecure direct object reference, when, you know, if you know the order ID, you can go get the order from somebody, regardless of whether or not you're supposed to be fetching their order, stuff like that. So again, like really, especially because, you know, Simpress is a pretty large company, we've got 13 different businesses and thousands of developers. So if it's an issue, we absolutely have to deal with it. Um, so, so really, it's a mixed bag of just about everything. Yeah, with, and now that, yeah. uh huh. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I was gonna say with with definitely secrets management is kind of a, a common thing that we often run into. Yeah, it, it does seem like secrets management does sort of sit on top of every other issue, right? I mean, you you see uh, pipelines uh, and you see people talking about different DevOps tools and landscapes with you know hundreds and hundreds of tools, and you don't really have necessarily one specific area that secrets fits in and secrets management. And I never see the tools that are related to secrets management in that box or anything like that, because I feel like secrets management really is like sort of this, let's sit on top of everything else, meaning everything that you do, because you're using a multitude of applications, you're going to run across a password, a token, a credential, mm -hmm. for every single one of these tools, inevitably you need to deal with it. So I feel like it's kind of hard for, for these people building, you know, the landscape of DevOps tools to actually say, here's secrets management. Oh, and here's like the box that it fits in. Cause it's not really in like a pipeline. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of a common issue too, I think, because a lot of vendors <clears throat> even don't really make it sort of um, a top priority for their tooling. So like, you know, the number of times I talk with teams who are trying to integrate with some other vendor or like, hey, this guy does this really cool thing that we want to bring into our system. And then you go to look at integrating with those applications and then like, hey, go get, create some AWS access keys and stick them in our system. Or like, hey, we've got this API token, just go put it in your system. And, you know, they don't have any like, uh, you know, they don't have those tools and techniques for, for making secrets management easy. And so you end up with, API keys and tokens and whatever, just copy and paste it everywhere. And it just makes the problem worse. Uh, some vendors make that easy, but a lot of them still just don't. I was actually talking with somebody, sorry, I was talking with somebody just yesterday. Um, one of our vendors they were working with, it's kind of one of our core vendors. And again, they were trying to figure out a way to automate that process of, of managing their access credentials to that vendor. And they just couldn't, didn't exist. <laughs> couldn't do anything. So they was really just like copy an API key and Keep it around until it gets stolen, you know, it's kind of their 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 policy. But but anyway, sorry. 
Oh, no. Well, let's hope that they can figure that one out soon. But uh, <laughs> uh, coming back to you, because uh, you mentioned, of course, Simpress uh, and that it's a large company. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the organization, how it works, um, and then uh, a little bit more about you know what your day-to-day looks like. So Simpress is um, it's a conglomerate of about 13 businesses. So our, our biggest and most well-known is Vistaprint, recently rebranded to Vista. Um, people in the U.S. who have business cards, especially small businesses, are probably pretty familiar with it. You know, they've been handing out cheap business cards to people for just about forever. Um, and um, it's a very, it's very hands-off organization. It's very decentralized. So, you know, we've got businesses in the United States, in South America, in Europe, um, and we've got teammates just about everywhere um, in Simpress. And the company, again, the company takes a very hands-off approach to the day-to-day details of how these businesses and even teams inside the businesses run. And so we've got teams building on Java and JavaScript and Python. And again, like you name a language, we've probably got somebody building with it somewhere in Simpress. Um, and, and so, you know, I'm on the Simpress security team. We're actually a pretty small team, you know, for context, Simpress is probably like 13,000 employees. Simpress security is probably about 25 employees. Um, so, you know, we're not a centralized, uh, security team. You know, we're not checking everybody's pull requests and reviewing everybody's architecture. Um, instead, we're more of a, you know, like a guide, you know, create documentation, help find tooling. Um, we, we make relationships with vendors, you know, for tools that we think that our teams need and make that available to teams to consume, sort of a managed security service model. Um, so um, that's kind of our way of interaction. We're, we're almost more of a service team and a support team for our our customers being Simpress employees than anything else. So hopefully that all makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've had you on stage before uh, at our KeyConf event as well. Uh, and, you know, you've told this a couple of times, but I'd like, you know, to hear it again, because it's always a, a good story. Uh, give us a little bit about the background, sort of when, uh, you know, you started looking at, the fragmentation of tooling that you had within Simpress subsidiaries and how you came around to, you know, figuring out, well, we need to find a more centralized way to manage everything and then came across Achilles. Sure. Um, so <clears throat> we, um, again, secrets management has always been a key part of application management. Um, and so Simpress teams do it whether they realize it or not. I mean, every team does secrets management, whether they realize it or not. Even if you just go and create API keys and stick them your environment variable into an environment variable, you're doing secrets management. Just the really kind of long and painful way. Um, anyway, so again, like all of our teams have to deal with that. And, um, and you know, that's because that's such an important service, because that's in such an important facet of applications, you know, we've always wanted to have a good solution for teams. Um, and again, you know, from a decentralized fashion, we don't actually like force teams to use a particular way of doing things. They use whatever way makes most sense to them. And so we've got a mixed bag of just about everything. Um, a lot of our teams, you know, we do build um, pretty heavily on AWS. So a lot of our teams just fall back on like AWS Secret Manager. Um, and, and again, that works fine as long as you're working in AWS. <clears throat> but of course, like even, even with something like AWS, it's impossible to have 100% of your stuff there or use 100% of their services. So we've always got these gaps at the edges where, you know, like, uh, well, hey, you know, we're printing company, we still have some on-prem infrastructure that's not in AWS. You know, we've got teams, you know, a lot of our businesses have um, stuff that's not in the major cloud providers, or, you know, we don't necessarily use AWS code commit. So our code lives outside of AWS. So we've got all of these edges where, yeah, theoretically, you could get it all done with AWS, maybe if you wanted to, and you really knew what you're doing. Um, but that doesn't really work in practice. And so we've got teams doing, you know, all sorts of different ways to try to manage credentials. And we wanted to help I mean, just like I said, kind of help simplify that for them, give them an option that they could take and use everywhere and give them some good patterns and approaches that would simplify the kinds of issues they were dealing with. Um, And so, um, you know, we've gone through a couple vendors over the years. Um, Simper Security likes to, you know, really kind of reevaluate uh, the tooling out there um, on a regular basis to see if there's something that works better for people. Um, and of course, we stumbled upon, we did stumble upon Keyless. Our CSO at the time, Ian Ahmet, um, he's in Israel. And so he had his really, you know, like a real um, 
uh, hand into the Israeli startup community. Um, and so he introduced us to Achilles and was like, hmm, do you think this will work? Go evaluate it. And so we did, you know, we launched a little POV. We talked with them, read the documentation. Um, and I guess the short of it is, you know, we, we found it to be a really good fit for our needs. Um, there was a couple, a couple edge cases that we had teams that were struggling with um, that we were able to finally fix that we didn't, you know, couldn't take care of in our old secrets management vendor. Um, and so um, it, was, it was very successful for, for some of our teams. And, you know, we've, we've definitely been growing with it and finding new ways to use it as we've been with it. Really cool. So one of the reasons that I really wanted to have you on the podcast as well is because you recently did something that really kind of made us, you know, stare in awe and be like, wow, okay, you really took this to the next level, right? Not only have you been using us as a customer and it's fantastic and, you know, interaction is great, um, but you decided to then write your own set of posts on how to use Achilles to build what you, what you would call a credential list application. I mean, you know, obviously we'd say you'd kind of need some credentials, but uh, the idea being that they're all short lived. So can you give us a little bit of uh, a background uh, to how this part came about? Yeah. I mean, I think the answer to that is like, I had already been pushing teams in Simpress towards Temporary credentials, dynamic credentials, you know, credential lists, I call it that anyway, just because they're so short lived credential lists, um, ways of interacting with services. And I mean, you don't necessarily like some of that. That's not a new concept, you know, even with AWS, you know, um, <clears throat> you've got the STS service where you can go and fetch a temporary credential to access AWS. And AWS has a few ways to make that available. Like you can use SSO to log in AWS and get temporary credentials to use. You know, that's a good example of it. Like, hey, you know, I've, I have um, my own access already and I'm gonna piggyback on that to gain access to a, to a new system without needing to create a permanent access token. You know, that's kind of the idea. Um, but again, um, you know, it's something that we really need um, in Simpress as teams continue to interact with all of the different kinds of systems, you know, databases, connecting to AWS. Um, you know, uh, again, like if you're in AWS, no problem, but like if you're on, on in, you know, if you're um, looking from the perspective of some on-prem infrastructure and you need to connect to AWS, you know, how do you do that without just sticking a permanent access credential into your system? Um, and, and again, we've got these rules around rotation, um, you know, in Simpress, like, you know, teams must rotate credentials regularly, but like, how do you actually do that? And, and again, like, there's one easy answer to all of this is, you know, if you're only ever using temporary credentials then you don't have to worry about rotation, you don't have to worry about credentials getting stolen. Um, and, you know, that, that makes the whole thing a lot more secure. And just as I I was, you know, working with teams to try to find good ways to do this, you know, in their systems, it just kind of occurred to me, you know, it's not just that it makes it more secure, but it actually makes it easier to develop um, because, you know, again, you don't have to worry about copying and pasting credentials everywhere, API keys or AWS access tokens or whatever, you know, instead you've got this ability to, um, to basically, it just becomes a, a configuration problem um, where, you configure your secret manager, in this case, Achilles, um, with uh, all the information it needs to manage temporary access credentials. And then you configure access for users. And, and the fun part of it is that you can do all of that with Terraform. So you can imagine, and, and then that's what I did, is you know, a, a, way, a setup where um, you can fully automate not just the deployment of your infrastructure, but you can automate the configuration of your secret manager um, so that all of your people and all of your services are able to connect to the system they need, you know, with just temporary credentials. So no permanent access credentials anywhere. Um, and, and again, like it definitely improves security because you don't have to worry about credentials getting stolen. Um, but, but also again, it, it really actually makes the development process easier. It's probably easier to start with a specific example. Okay, so let's imagine, um, well, you know, starting at the top, let's say you've got an application that needs to connect to a database. 99% of the time, what teams do is, you know, they'll have a DBA or a developer or somebody connect to the database and make a, a username and password, and they'll stick that in an environment variable. And when their application launches, it reads out that 
password and that username and it connects to the database, right? Nice and simple. Um, and so that's why I think teams start with that because it's nice and simple. Um, but again, like you start running into scale issues. Like, you know, what do you do when you've got a developer who is working locally and needs to test some stuff and needs to connect to the database? Like, you know, do you have somebody that goes and creates a password for them and gives it to them, you know, to put on their local machine? You know, now you've got that credentials for all starting and you have to worry about giving them network access. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, what starts off as a nice and easy to way to manage it quickly creates more issues. And, and again, what if you do need to rotate that password? You know, maybe you had an employee who left and, and even when they leave on good terms, you still want to make sure they don't have access. I've actually seen businesses go very badly because an employee left on bad terms and actually, you know, use their existing credentials to um, cause trouble for the businesses. Hopefully that doesn't happen too often, but it does. So like, again, like uh, there's lots of reasons why credential rotation is inevitable. And if you just kind of took a username and password and stuck it in your application environment, like how do you change that? You know, that's actually the big question I've gotten from teams. Like, hey, you know, we've got these access credentials in our environment, but how do we change it? Because like, I need to relaunch my application, but I need to change the password. And if I change the password, then my application breaks. So like, how do I change the password and get it in the new application without breaking anything? Like, it's surprising how often this kind of gets people stuck. Um, and the issue, again, is it's the wrong, it's really just the wrong approach. Um, and so that, that's kind of the sort of problem I was trying to solve with this um, because it can be so much easier. And, you know, when you start talking about like, well, hey, let's get the secret manager involved and it's going to create access credentials for us and they're temporary. So we don't have any permanent access credentials. I think probably the first response people have is like, that sounds like way too much effort. Like, that's just crazy. We don't want to do that. We need to just get things done. But the reality is, you know, and that's what I was trying to demonstrate with this is it actually makes, um, you know, ongoing effort way easier. Like you got to wrap your head around the concept. And again, it helps to have an example that shows you like, here's how you deploy that automatically. So that's what I wanted to do. Here's an example of here how, here's how to do this all automatically. Because once you have that tooling in place, once you know how to do it, it makes the entire process so much easier, right? Because you don't have to worry about like, putting a password in your application's environment, you know? Instead, you just configure the secret manager and your application, you, you let the secret, you let your application know like, hey, here's where you get your password out of the secret manager. And then when your, when your application needs it, it connects to the secret manager and it gets a new one. And if that one expires, hey, no problem, because your application knows how to go and get another one out of your secret manager. And so again, you just need a little bit more code so that your application can go and get its own credentials. Um, and you can automate the entire process of secret rotation and secret management. Um, and then you can do that same thing for your developers locally. You know, again, you've got that same problem. Hey, I've got this developer over here who needs to run something against my production database. You know, normally what people do is like, hey, again, same thing, go create a username, create a password, give it to them. Um, they stick it in a file on their computer or an environment variable or something like that. You know, like that, that takes time, that takes effort. You know, instead, if you've got this concept of, hey, well, my secret manager already knows how to generate credentials. My application already knows how to go fetch those out of the secret manager. So all I have to do is give my developer access to the secret manager. And now the application can automate that entire process for them. So like giving a developer access to your database is just a matter of configuration. Hey, we've already got SAML set up. So I just click a couple buttons and now they have access and now they can run the application locally and it can connect to the database. And hey, you know what? It's not just about database access because you need network access too. But again, we can solve that problem because you know we can use again the keyless acts as can act, act as an SSH certificate authority, so it can issue temporary SSH credentials. So we can give them access to the Bastion host and the database all at the same time. So again, I go to one place on my secret manager, give somebody access, and you know, bam, they can you know they can run workloads against the production database without having to do anything because the tooling is already there to make that all automatic. So hmm. oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. Sorry. That's a question. So, so again, um, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but um, you know, that's the idea is not only does it make it more secure because now we don't have any fixed access credentials anywhere. Everybody's using temporary credentials. Those credentials automatically expire. On top of that, it's really easier because I've exchanged an access management problem. Like, hey, where do I put these credentials? How do I store these credentials? What do I do with these credentials? For a configuration problem, you know, all I have to do is configure my secret manager so that, you know, 
Jane over there has access and Bob has access and that my production system has access and my development system has access and my backup system has access. I configure access, which is um, much easier. And they just go and get access themselves. They go fetch the credentials. The credentials automatically expire. Just, it simplifies the problem really dramatically. Um, and, you know, having used this in, you know, some of the systems we build, I mean, that, that's really a summary. It's way easier. You know, I switch, you know, sometimes I'll like switch from a work machine. Sometimes I need to go over to my personal laptop. Um, and like, you know, I can still connect to our systems. Um, and I don't have to worry about, again, like those access management issues. I don't have to worry about copying um, access uh, credentials down to my um, my personal laptop because again I don't have to do that you know it, that access management problem is handled for me automatically it's me who has access and any credentials that do get created are gone in an hour anyway they automatically expire so I don't have to worry about like oh did I accidentally leave um, AWS access credentials on my personal machine nope it was not possible didn't happen um, and again so like you know moving around changing machines a computer broke, I need to set up a new work computer. I don't have to worry about reconfiguring my environment. Again, because <clears throat> my application already knows how to do all of the connection bits and pieces. And I, you know, via SAML, I've already got my access. So it's all automatic for me. Um, yeah, that, so anyway. that's, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, a full, complete explanation of, of how things are done. And it's uh, it's really cool. You, you included a small thing about authentication in there for sure. And that's obviously one of the keys, making sure that your authentication is set up correctly. And that's the job of, you know, the administrator side. You know, I always say there's two sides to, you know, two types of users for the system, right? You have those uh, who set up the authentication and those who are using the authentication in order to interact with their applications yeah. using the secrets. So you're, you're on the administrator side. Uh, so you have a lot to deal with now uh, being that you're uh, I would call you a, a power user. I think that's fair to say uh, <laughs> of a key list. Uh, you understand obviously the need for secrets management um, and you know why it's so important Um now, what is it that you're seeing with other companies that may not put it at the forefront? Like, why do you think that that's something that, you know, are they just missing something? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think it's a lot like any other, <clears throat> any other code related issue where like to, to, to pick a phrase, well, not to pick a phrase, but to, to use a common phrase and hopefully I don't get confused and misusing it, you know, just technical debt. You know, it's easy to have that thought of like, hey, you know what? Again, yeah, I can I can set up a secret manager and try to do this the fancy way, uh, or I can just go and copy and paste the, an API key or an access token, and it'll take me five seconds. And so it's easy to go with like, hey, you know what? <clears throat> I'm just going to copy and paste this API key. Although again, I, I would say I would I would argue that like those companies are still doing secret management. It's just their secret management strategy is let's just copy and paste access credentials everywhere. <laughs> like you know, you have to you have to do secret management whether you think of it that way or not, because if you're using you know connecting to multiple systems, you're, you're managing your credentials. It's just a question of how. Um, so, so yeah, I, I would say, um, and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't sound um, mean of me to say this, you know, like, I think, I think that, um, um, you know, they've just, you know, it's easy to miss on the fact that like, you know, again, like short-term versus long-term vision, like it's easy to think like, Hey, this will just take me five seconds to copy over this API key problem solved and miss all of the problems that makes in the long run. Like, again, you're going to have to do this a dozen times in the next month. Um, do you really want to do it that many times? You know, you're going to end up with this API key everywhere. What happens when one of those dozen systems you've put it in gets breached? Um, and I've, I've seen companies get through this. Oh, like, oh, something did get stolen. Like, oh, we had this access credential that we copied into a dozen, a dozen different systems. It got stolen. We don't even know how it got stolen because it was in so many different systems. And then we, we rotate it because now we have to. And then that whole process of getting everything working again, I've seen that take a month because they don't even remember all the other systems that they put it in until slowly one by one, you know, they see things breaking over the next month as like, wait, why is this system not working? Oh, they were using that access credential that we had to invalidate because it was broken. Now it's time to go do that again. So, um, I, you know, I think it, uh, again, everybody does secret management, whether you think of it that way or not. It's just a question of how. And it's, it is, it's really easy to say, uh, I'll just take five seconds and, and create a credential and stick it in here and be done with it. Um, and it's easy to miss the fact that this really causes more problems in the long term than anything else. And a little bit of work up front, a little bit of training, a little bit of tooling 
can really make that long term way, 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 way easier. And it's, it's 100% worth it. Um, and I, I think a lot of it is just helping people realize like, hey, there's a better way. And it's really the easier way. And it's the more secure way. So go for it. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. Uh, a lot of great information. Uh, I want to ask one question that I actually ask all my guests, uh, which is the final question of the day. Uh, and that is, what would be some advice, maybe one or two tips that you would have um, for anyone in the space, you know, developers and things like that, that are, um, you know, trying to stay secure while still building their infrastructure applications, building the application, you know, uh, writing their applications, et cetera. What are a couple of ideas, a couple of ways they could stay secure while making sure that they're not losing time, you know, on developing? Yeah. So and I, again, I, I'm just because I've been talking about secrets management, I'm going to keep in that area. You know, I think the one, the one really simple suggestion that I like to give teams, um, you know, again, like you don't necessarily, like there's plenty of there's plenty of things you can do with a high ROI without having to go out and buy a keyless. Although, I like a keyless, so feel free. <laughs> I think it's a great solution. But but um, again, that's not that's not the only solution. <clears throat> and the simplest change that I would make for teams is this whole concept of like, hey, let's stick um, our configuration and our secrets in our environment. And when my application launches, it's going to pull those out, and that's how it's going to run. I don't think that's a good really strategy for the long run, even though that's a really common strategy for the long run. Because again, it, it really ties your application down to that set of secrets. So when you have to rotate something, because you're going to have to rotate something, you know, like now your rotation process is generate new API key, whatever, stick it in the environment, relaunch application. And it can be difficult depending on the service to, to coordinate all of that without causing downtime. And so the, the thing that if nothing else, I push teams towards doing is, you know, take just a little bit more time and integrate your application with your secret manager. Again, even if you're not using a keyless, you probably got like AWS secret manager or AWS parameter store or some other equivalent, you know, integrate your application with that directly so that your application can go and fetch secrets out of the secret manager with instead of pulling them out of the environment. <clears throat> because once you've done that, it's really easy to add just a little bit more logic. Hey, I went to make an API call and it failed. Well, let me go and see if there's a new secret in the secret manager, and I'm going to retry that call with that new secret. And so that makes it really easy to retry. Um, it makes it really easy to rotate credentials because, again, it's going to happen. Um, and it also does make your application a little bit secure because, especially these days, there's more and more um, issues with um, uh, attacks targeting the environment of applications because people like to store secrets in there. You know, you look at CodeCub um, and, you know, the, the, that breach, that supply chain breach um, that was, I don't remember the exact details, but like their, their, their whole um, system had been hacked, for lack of a better word, for I think a couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, what did that, you know, malicious payload do? It extracted everything out of the environment of the running pipeline and sent it off to a remote server. Um, and, and again, like it's really like the environment's really not the best place for it anyway. You know, you want to stick here. If you, you have your application fetch secrets directly out of your secret manager, you skip the environment altogether. Again, it makes it easier to change secrets. Um, it makes you less vulnerable to these sorts of, um, you know, supply chain and other attacks that are starting to target specifically the environment. Um, so it's going to make you more flexible and it's going to make you more secure. And, you know, that's a relatively small change. Not that I think it would be a big change to a full-blown secret manager like a keyless, but that's a relatively small change for a lot of teams. Like instead of pulling it out of the environment, let me pull, I have my application pulled directly out of the secret manager. Um, oh, and it does fix some of these other issues that we've talked about. Again, you don't have to worry about you know, like trying to launch on uh, a program on your developer machine. You don't have to worry about getting credentials to their computer. Instead, again, you just give them access to your secret manager and the application can pull them out directly out of there. So it's got a pretty good ROI um, in terms of making ongoing work easier and also making it more secure. And it's a smaller change for some teams. Just, you know, don't worry about the environment, pull it directly out of the secret manager. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that wraps it up. So Connor, um, really awesome again to have you on the show. The, uh, the series of posts, if anyone wants to read them, is at blog.cmancone, C-M-A-N-C-O-N-E.com. Uh, Connor, where else can people reach you? Um, I guess LinkedIn. <laughs> That's about the only place I really am. So I'm the only Connor Mancone on there. So if you can, if you can spell my name right, you can find me. 
<laughs> Wonderful. Great again speaking to you. And uh, I hope to come around again at some point and uh, have another discussion uh, about what you guys are doing over at Simpress. So thanks so much for your time and have a really good one. All right. You too. Thanks, Jeremy.